Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Johnson Sunmin Miller. So it's Bodhi night, um, at least according to the solar calendar. According to the lunar calendar, we're uh, a month early, but, uh, but that's all right. Every night's Bodhi night, right? Um, and so this is the night when uh, Siddhartha um, um, supposedly received his ultimate uh, awakening there. And um, we get a, a few versions of this. And one of those versions, the big insight that he grasped was um, the uh, dependent arising. And so when I want to, so I want to talk about dependent arising here tonight or in sort of a practical way. Um, but there's, uh, um, there's two major versions of this. There's the one that emphasizing the 12 links of, um, uh, of uh, the you know, 12 links of uh, dependent arising. But there's another lesser known one that involves just nine. And that's uh, sort of repetitive rather than cyclical, like the 12 links are. Um, so I want to uh, focus on that uh, concept and its use for our moment-to-moment -moment awareness, moment-to-moment -moment, uh, awakening. Um, and in fact, I think there's there may even be earlier, uh, older versions of this in the Pali Canon. The uh, the Book of Eights is generally regarded as by scholars as among the earliest of the of the texts in the Pali Canon. And in there, it seems like little bits of uh, like an unsystematized version. Of dependent arising appears in there in places, um, and then there's this um, ninefold version that's in the Sun uh, uh, Nikaya, and then the dominant one we you know we usually learn with the, the twelve links in the chain of, of dependent arising um, that appears in multiple uh, multiple places. But it's the, the ninefold. So I don't know if that's uh, you know progressive development over time or if it's sort of earlier non systematic version and then different versions of it appeared, but Either way, it's the, the ninefold one that I find most uh, most helpful. So here I'll, I'll read, uh, it might not be, I'm going to read uh, one one part of the, the arising part rather than the cessation part here. Um, and this is something that uh, in the, the Sudha Siddhartha tells a, a student who overhears that that, um, uh, that he should memorize this and chant it regularly. And so this is something I, that I uh, used to do for quite a while. It was quite helpful to do this practice. So um, through the interaction of I and form, so step one, I consciousness arises. These three conditions together are contact. Contact conditions feeling, feeling conditions craving, craving conditions grasping, grasping conditions becoming, becoming conditions birth, and birth conditions aging and death. This thus arises the entire mass of suffering. So it's just those, those nine there. And then it goes through, of course, you know, ear, and sound, nose, and smell, and um, and so forth. Um, and so here you get, you know, just like with the twelve links, the arising of uh, dukkha. Um, but also, and here we're seeing so with the twelve, the twelve links, a sort of traditional interpretation of that is is um, is that explaining uh, cycles of rebirth. Um, but I'm not necessarily so sure this one really allows for that. Instead, what we see be arising here is I, the sense of I and the sense of self, and therefore then uh, the dukkha, you know, I arises and then suddenly it's like, oh, this sucks. Um, and so it's this, um, and it's it's not, um, and there's not a cycle to it. Right? It's just this iterative, iterative process. So it seems to just to hear moment after moment, this continual arising of I, and therefore then of, uh, of dukkha. And I found this to be a really useful uh, map and way for, um, for helping me to watch that arising of I in, in moments. Um, and so you get this, so the interaction between I and, and form. So in this case, form as this thing out there um, that you your eye picks up on and then consciousness awareness of this arises um, and then from that okay so there's the contact with whatever and then from that emerges feeling this is the judgmental sense of, of feeling that it's um, um, pleasurable desirable uh, you're indifferent to it or uh, feeling aversive to it so this initial sense of, of judgment that then 
uh, propels on um, than a sense of, of craving or, or aversion, the flip side of the two, um, and then on from there to, to grasping. And to me, that's where that grasping moment, it, you know, this is just a map, right? So just a model here. But in that, in this map, it's that with that grasping then that you get, start to get that emerging of that, that sense of difference. That from there, that grasping, you get the mind, which maybe that's the becoming part. And then from there, uh, from there arises, um, the, comes birth, the, the sense of I, mine and then I, as opposed to you and yours. Um, and so then with that birth, that, um, that uh, dissatisfaction, the, the dukkha, um, so if so, then this is, and if it's a decent map, then it's also a map for thinking about um, the cessation of, of dukkha. And here, just read real quick the, uh, the cessation part of this version of um, dependent arising. So through the interaction of I and form, I consciousness arises, these three conditions together are contact, contact conditions feeling, feeling conditions craving, but with the remainderless fading away and cessation of that same, oh, sorry, reading the, uh, um, got the wrong, uh, the wrong version of that there. Um, yeah, oh yeah, but with the remainderless fading away and cessation of that same craving comes cessation of grasping. With the cessation of grasping, cessation of becoming, and with the cessation of becoming, cessation of birth. With the cessation of birth, cessation of aging and death, thus ceases the entire mass of, of suffering. So it's our standard formula we're, we're used to with thinking about um, uh, dependent arising, except with just the nine, the nine there. But when I, using this for practical purposes, when I would uh, you know, memorize and enchant it, I did a, I revised it a little bit um, for I think is more practical use of this. This is cessation of I and form I consciousness arises. These three together are contact, contact conditions feeling, feeling conditions craving. But with the remainderless fading away and cessation of that same craving, cut off in a single stroke, are grasping, becoming birth, aging, and death. Thus ceases the entire mass of suffering. Let's go to the one and uh, cutting off the others. So that um, I inform consciousness, the contact feeling, it seems like those are all inevitable. That's just a matter of being human. Can't get around that, can't do anything about it. Um, but where we can do anything about it, according to this map then, is cutting it off after, after feeling. Um, so feeling that, that homeostatic disturbance to our, our system there. We recognize it and, and cut it off there. Observing the responses, letting them go away, before the emergence of, of uh, cr the craving that leads to grasping, that leads to, uh, to I-ness and to, and to dukkha. Um, in practice, I, mean, I, you know, I can't tell the difference between uh, grasping and craving, becoming and, and, um, and birth um, and, and so forth. But, um, and you know, more, uh, usually more likely to catch uh, something like craving rather than feeling any sort of um, moment to moment things. But sometimes feeling um, really works. So I've been having these uh, um, these migraines over the last uh, five, six days or so. And, um, and if you've ever worked with um, pain as an object of meditation, um, but you know, something odd happens when you, when you do, you know, so I get this really specific tight, you know, sharp pain right here in my, um, the my uh, what do you call it the, the eyebrow there and um, but then when I concentrate on it, trying to find the feeling part of it rather than this thing that you know I, I call pain which find is much more dispersed and it's constantly moving it's this sort of undulating mass and that when I am able to really concentrate on it it, it um, has its moments it, like it's just it ceases to be pain so there in that moment seeing the, the feeling where that that um, that sort of judgmental aspect and cutting it off and can actually see, you know, the, the, you know, with the, uh, um, uh, you know, any single stroke, um, the cessation of that entire mass of suffering in my, 
in my eye. Of course, I usually have to be laying down to do that. I can't be grading papers uh, like I've been doing most of this week while I've had that. But um, anyway, um, and so here we get this is map, this way of looking at here moment to moment, watching this um, this arising of eyeness, the rising of um, of a craving and a rising of um, of the, the dukkha, and and so I think that you know here we started off today right with um, chanting together the opportunities to awaken are infinite. We vow to embrace them all. These are those moments. I think this is what this uh, sutta points to here. These are these moment, moment after moment where there's this opportunity uh, to awaken. And so look at in each moment there, watching. Um, going to feeling or what have you, there's that, you know, in terms of one's um, what, oh, you know, what is this? Or uh, who am I? Um, what am I? Or usually that what that turns into me, for me is, uh, you know, what is I? Um, and here, um, you know, so asking that what, oh, in each of those moments. And so 2,500 years ago, uh, it's the solar calendar, uh, Siddhartha uh, beneath the tree, um, supposedly uh, mapped all this 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 out, teaching, providing us a model for how to um, embrace those infinite moments, and they are infinite. So anyway, so friends, um, let's how we these um, these opportunities they are infinite. So how we uh, we can um, let's uh, let's embrace them all. <laughs>